Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this module, we're taking a look at how to get data from the front end, from the canvas or an HTML DOM, to a database. And to do that, we have to go through the server. So we've had a couple lessons on that already. We've taken a look at what data is and information saw how to store that in local storage, and then we started taking a look at an HTML form. This is the Canvas version of that form here. Woohoo! Um, what's nice about this is the same system can be used here on the Canvas or in the DOM, the same back-end system, so that's why we're taking a look at both of them. We also took a look at the HTML form and saw how we could set that up to send the data. But before we look at the server script and how to get that into a database, let's take a look at how to set up a database. So we're going to PHP my admin here, where we already have uh, a database set up called danzen underscore all. PHP my admin, by the way, should be available via cPanel or any server administration. So you probably need access to that. Um, danzen dot com slash all has been around for a while or underscore all has been around for a while as you can see we've made many games and features on that this is just the first set here's the second set Ooh. and now we're into our our third set where we've been making some for zim down here we have a zim form which is this table so each of these are tables so all these things are tables inside of a database. Now, sometimes you would make a new database for a new project. Well, when we were given our database, we only had one of them. Maybe then got three of them or something like that. And otherwise we had to pay. So we said, ah, we're not gonna pay. Instead, you can see that we've underscored. So each of these things are uh, pre prefaced with an underscore to sort of help us organize. All of these things are tables in one database. It may be that these days databases are free and plentiful and you can make a database for a new project. And then that database might store a couple tables or a lot of tables or just one table. Or you can do it this way with just storing tables. All right, so tables are where the information is. Here's a table right here. It's like a grid. So think of a spreadsheet. And across the top, we have the names of the fields of the table. So these are the columns. And so the column names are the field names, so the ID, the name, the count, and the color. This is the data that we're collecting. And then going down, we have the rows, and the rows are records. So those are database records. Each entry is a row, or it could be a row. Sometimes we update a specific row. But if you insert, then it means you've inserted uh, a record here. And that's roughly how it works. Um, MySQL allows, or PHP MyAdmin allows you to set up the structure of, so I'm, I'm clicking some tabs along here across the top, the structure. So this is how we set that up, what types of information we're collecting in there, an integer for the ID, text for the name, an integer for the count, text for the color. And then this thing's got a key next to it and it's auto incrementing. So this is a key field, which means it will be unique and it will actually increase itself. So we don't, as we enter information, we don't even care. It just sort of automatically increases. Um, so that's handy. Sometimes the ID might be based on a user ID and you may not want to automatically increase that. It might be their user ID. So um, it just depends on what you're doing there. There's other features that you can use along here as well. What we're going to do is make one. Let's just take a look at the browse though. So I'm then clicking on the, the browse. This shows us the records that are in the table and the table in the database, right? Got it. And so here they are. You can go in and edit these as well, at which point you could change the numbers. You can do reports on them and, and that kind of stuff. Is, uh, so there you go, or delete, copy, etc., and see them, sort them. All right. Sometimes you have lots of records, in which case you need to sort of watch what's happening here. I, I don't have 500 rows, but this is saying how many rows you want to show at a time. That's handy. All right, let's make one, shall we? So I've got a new new link right here, uh, maybe somewhere else. Perhaps as you come in, you can see all of the tables in a big page in the front. You might find a new table 
link there as well. So I click the new. And we put the table name up here. We can call it uh, zim underscore learn underscore sample or something like that. Uh, no, oops, I didn't mean to hit enter. So there, there we go. And here we will put some information. Our first one was the ID. The next one is the oh, the name. I would, if I were you, keep these exactly the same as your HTML fields. And then when we collect variables in PHP as well, keep those exactly the same name. And otherwise, you're just asking for trouble and typos. So, and also the order name. What was the next one that we collected? Count it was, and the color. If you're consistent with all those things, it becomes easier. Color. This one can remain an integer. Here we will set this to text. There's also this var char, which is a shorter thing, but I find sometimes I, I don't know if you have to specify a number of characters. Anyway, I've had problems with it before in the past. I think you'll be just fine if you put it text unless you've got you know got got a serious database work and you know millions of records and stuff like that then it may not make a difference but otherwise that's easiest and if we scroll on over here there's the tricky way that we can set auto incrementing right there and you can also select a primary key from there that's what we want but if we hit auto incrementing it just chooses it and we hit go there's stuff about setting the size, but I would just leave things default if I were you. And then here I am. I'm going to hit save. Save. There we go. Yay. Now if I hit browse, there's nothing in our table. Uh, you can actually insert something into the table right here in PHP. One thing that's neat is everything you do in PHP shows, uh, shows up how it actually did what it just did. <laughs> so select from Zim learn sample. That's that's how the SQL query that it did to show us all these results. Uh, maybe there's not one for structure, but um, if you went and inserted one yourself, you would see the SQL command to do that insert. But we're going to take a look at that when we go into PHP. Well, you know, there you go. Yay! Now we've got a table. Woohoo! So uh, when we come back, we're going to take a look at the PHP to get the data from the form, the HTML form, into this table. That'll be exciting, won't it? Yeah, here on um, Creative Coding.